Hi, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've all had a good week. Today I'm going to be continuing my little series on the three elements of exposure, shutter speed, aperture and ISO. In the last episode we looked at shutter speed, today I'm going to talk about aperture. The aperture is the hole in your lens that controls how much light enters your camera. It works in the same way as the pupil in your eye, dilates in dark condition and contracts in bright ones. Aperture also controls the depth of field in your image, that is the amount of your picture that is sharp from front to back. Aperture and shutter speed are connected to get the perfect exposure. Now the best way I've had this described is like pouring water into a glass. If we tip water into a glass in one go then it's fast. A wide aperture and a fast shutter speed, all the light gets in very quickly. If we pour it through a funnel then it takes longer for the same amount of water to arrive in the glass because less can travel through this smaller hole at any one time. So with a wide aperture such as f1.2 pouring water straight into our glass then the shutter speed is faster, we're letting the light straight in. If we use a small aperture such as f16 or f22, our funnel in this case, then the shutter speed needs to be slower, it takes more time for that same amount of light to get through the hole. So this gives us our exposure, but how about depth of field? How does aperture affect our images visually? So a small aperture gives us a greater depth of field. The image will be sharp from front to back. A wide aperture gives us a shallow depth of field. Only a very thin area of the image will be in focus. The way to remember this is small f number, small area of focus. Large f number is large area of focus. As the F number gets smaller, the depth of field is smaller and the blur becomes extreme. So we can see this in action with this shot of a baby at F1.2. The baby's in focus, their eyes and eyelashes are pin sharp. But when we look at the ground more closely, we can see just how thin this depth of field is. You know, it's only about 10 centimetres there. Now this is important because you can use depth of field for creative effect, but it's also important to understand the potential pitfalls. We might look back at those pictures of the toy doll and think, oh, F1.2 F1 gives us by far the most interesting effect. But our depth of field is literally centimetres. And so focus will be a challenge. Because if your subject or you are moving even the slightest bit, then you might not have the right area in focus. It takes a lot of practice to shoot at wide apertures. But because it lets in more light, you can shoot when it's darker. So getting to grips with this concept and then practicing as much as you can it will make a huge difference to your photography. So have a play. If you've been on automatic mode on your camera, then try it on aperture priority this week. So that's AV on the Canon cameras. Try shooting at the widest aperture you can, which will be the smallest F number. And then the other way around with your large F number and your large area of focus. As always, drop me a line if you get stuck and Tag me in your images, I'd love to see how you get on and I look forward to seeing you in the third and final part of this little mini-series where I'll be talking about ISO.